that's what I'm talking about. We bring them in, we brainwash them to love crypto, and then we sell on them. Fuck. All right, we're back here with episode 29 of the GameFi Rundown. I thought for a second Scariox stole my co-host, uh, but I got him back. Jim Barino, thanks for coming on. Nope, I'm gone forever. See you guys. Bye-bye. This is my last episode. Just kidding. Glad to be back. Thanks for having me. All right, so we'll get right into it today. There's not a whole lot of Alluvium stuff to talk about, but um, we definitely have some stuff we can get into. So the first topic is just October. What they've been saying with the whole crypto markets, Bitcoin, whatever, generally over the past, how long has it been going on? 14 years now for Bitcoin. Uh, September has always been like the worst month for, for Bitcoin and the crypto markets. And October has generally been one of the better months. A couple of days ago, we got a, a, a big spike. I thought things were going to keep going. They turned around a little bit. I mean, how are you feeling about this month? Do you think, are things going to go up? Is ILV going to go back up? Or are we just chill until open beta, chill until the having? I don't know. Um, honestly, I don't really care. But to be fun with it, like, I don't think, um, I don't see this, this month <laughs> doing very well. Just with everything we have going on. How this year's been i just see another like uh another month of sideways action more boring stuff uh probably better than last month but last month was like a like a sideways down market now we're in a sideways up market i guess yeah. we're just moving the same price it is what it is it's boring <laughs> i i'm not gonna lie like a few days ago when we got like the there was like a three hour period where it looked like bitcoin everything was pumping back up like i i got a little excited i was like it looks like october is here i think even ilv was it was probably sitting around 39 it got up to i think 42 close to 42 and mm -hmm. you know that got me excited because that's a big bag i'm holding and then you know you look at it today at the time of this recording and it's back down to about 39 so and we're only october 5th I, I think this is going to end a green month. I don't think we're going to be going down too much from here, but I also don't think it's going to be like a massively green month. I really do think we're just, everyone's just excited for like a big pump because it's been so long. But I think for ILV, maybe we get some decent pump when open beta is announced and when it comes out. But really, I think we're waiting beyond the happening the bitcoin having in in april and i really don't think we're gonna see some you know good price action until until next fall really i think we might have another 10 to 12 months before we really see something that you know that really brings in more people to this market yeah i think up until well past the having everything that looks like we're heading into a bull market is likely going to be a bull trap not financial advice i'm an idiot <laughs> Um, I'm not a trader for a living, but uh, if I were going to play the game and that's how I am and I am playing the game, that's how I'd play it. Just yeah. hodl, it, wait for the next having. Definitely. And what's funny is I've always thought of myself as like a newbie in the crypto market, but I I got into it right around the, the last having. And I mean, granted, we're still, you know, what, seven, seven ish months away. Um, I'm almost through a whole cycle, uh, which is crazy to me. And what I can tell you is that there's the hype for the, the Bitcoin having and things will pop up, but they really don't start pumping right away. A lot of people I think are going to get to the having in April ish and just be disappointed because it's probably still going to be till September or October before we really see anything. And obviously there's a lot of other factors that go into it too. It'll be nice to get to that having and I can say like I've gone through a full cycle and you know, now I'm a crypto veteran. Then we're yeah. going to introduce all the other newbies. What do they say? The the class of 2024 coming in. We can exactly. all watch them lose their big bags. That's what I'm talking about. We bring them in. We brainwash them to love crypto. And then we sell on them. Fuck you. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. But actually kind of true. No, actually, if you happen to be new and watching this channel, we want to help you. Uh... Buy my crypto so I can rug you. Just kidding. <laughs> right? Okay. Let... I, we'll see. We we got another episode of this before the end of October, and hopefully, where things are looking greener. Yeah. But let's move on here. All right. So this is just I saw some people talking about it in not specifically to Alluvium Discord, but just like Discords in for Web three gaming in general. It's everything has been so down for so long. Everyone's frustrated, and there's a lot of people who are just you know 
being toxic in the discords. Like they're just talking down about the games, talking down about the founders, you know, every time there's a delay, they just seem like they're always negative. And I want to get your thoughts on this, especially from a community sub council member uh, in the Alluvium Discord. But yeah, I want to hear your thoughts first before I say what I have to say about it. Just on general about my opinions on uh, free speech yeah. versus like... Yeah. Exactly. I mean, okay. that that's what I think. It's like, it's the free speech argument, which I'm in full support of. But then it's the other argument of like, you got you want to make it a friendly environment because you got new people coming in and you don't want them to see that toxicity and then just leave. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm an American. Nick, you're an American. We both love our freedom. We love our freedom of speech. But yeah. um, you know how these like kids feel on the internet feel really comfortable talking shit to you because you can't punch them in the mouth through a computer screen um freedom of speech works really well when you have to deal with the consequences of someone being right in front of you there's uh not even from the perspective of like oh i'm actually going to beat up this person but from the um mindset there's like a subconscious mindset of that physical violence no matter yeah, just what. the possibility of it just happening just the possibility of it happening yeah. Um, so that's why, and it's not like I'm scared to say this, it's just like this social feeling that you don't want to be as toxic in person. We don't have those repercussions when we talk with people online or, and especially when we're anonymous. So when it comes to communication in discord or really any communication over the internet specifically, um, I am in full support of not having free speech. Very, like we want the environment to be welcoming. We want people to feel happy and content in the presence of our Discord. We don't want them to feel uncomfortable. I mean, if uh, everybody, if it wasn't like, if Discord was a room full of people, like just talking, we wouldn't be having these problems. People would definitely be complaining, but. Uh, the toxicity would lower a lot. So that's my reasoning for not liking toxicity in general in the Discord. Yeah. A little bit and... long-winded, I apologize. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I mean, first of all, I fully agree. You know, I'm American. I, I like the idea of freedom of speech. And honestly, I hadn't thought too much about this in, until I, I saw some other people talking about it. And yeah, I, I'm always for free speech. But when you do think about it, like we're trying to, you know, build a, a big game here, you know, basically a whole new franchise and IP, and you need to bring new members into the community. You know, if you're outside of Alluvium right now, and you're just coming in as a completely, you know, new person, and you hop into any of these Discord chats, in and, and this isn't just Alluvium, this is most Web3 games right now, like you mostly, not most, but you do see a lot of complaining. You do see a lot of like calling out of, you know, you know, the team for not following through on promises or delays and it's happening everywhere in this space. And if you're brand new seeing that, like you might get turned away and just decide you don't want to be part of that community. And that is like, that doesn't help anybody here. I, I don't fully think we should just be like banning people left and right for being toxic, but there are people that no matter what you tell them, they just go back to their their ways of being, you know, toxic, I guess. Um, in, in the end, I don't have a great answer for this. I don't know the best solution, but it would be helpful to for the toxicity to just, you know, subside for a little bit and l let the community grow and, and come in with, you know, good vibes. All right, so we'll move on. So this is a... You actually sent me this link uh, about a week ago or something. It's an article. Let me pull it up here. An article that says 69% nice, percent of gamers hate NFTs, but only 12% understand them. Uh, I mean, do these numbers surprise you? I, I wasn't complete. I wasn't shocked at all when I saw this, especially the fact that like not only does 69% hate it like 12 percent of them are willing to admit that they don't understand it and they still hate it no only 12 percent of them understand it i think you said that wrong but you meant to say it oh yeah okay i said that wrong like let's put it this way 69 percent of them say that they hate nfts and games but out of those 69 only 12 percent of them say that they actually understand it yeah did i say that one right yeah there you go and if you think about it there's going to be a lot of people who say they hate nfts and then in the same survey, they're going to say that they do understand it, even if they don't, because why would you 
come out and just say that you don't under like you hate something that you don't understand yeah so you know these numbers just honestly i don't want to call people like stupid i ignorant is i guess the best the better word here like people just don't they don't get it and they don't care to get it yeah it's it's cool to hate on nfts but um it's not gonna be cool that you hate on nfts uh three or four years from now when you're still poor and you look like a fucking idiot but as i said like the 12 percent it's way lower than that come on man they don't fucking know what it is they like yeah. unless they specifically ask them questions like is this or this what an nft is they don't fucking know dude these people only hate nfts because it's cool they care about what other people think of them it's literally nothing else they have nothing else to go off of it's actually yeah. insane dude like this is one of the topics that burns me up the most because you you hate nfts but you're but you don't understand them whatsoever. Like you don't even know what an NFT is. You don't even know what NFT stands for. What the fuck are you complaining about? Shut the fuck up and yeah. do your own research, please, please. You can hate NFTs, <laughs> but at least know why you hate them and actually know what they are. Like it's completely yeah. fine if you hate them. But Just but the thing is, like, about. if you if you do fully understand NFTs and you fully understand them you're probably not going to hate them. You know, yeah. it's the same thing when it comes to Bitcoin. People say like, oh, Bitcoin's a scam. I don't want, I don't want to get Bitcoin. Like, it's because they don't understand it. I don't think I've ever met anyone who, who like fully understands Bitcoin or fully understands an NFT and is against it. It's not even that they don't understand it. It's that they don't, they don't want to understand it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's even worse. Like, why, why would you not want to understand something? Even if you think you hate it. Yeah, I don't know. I think, um, it actually does benefit some people more to hate it because like they have that social plus where they can like interact with this or this person because hey i hate this you hate this yeah sometimes it's a bonding thing they don't actually hate it they just you know trying to get in so it is what it is yeah i mean in in time like i can't wait to pull up some of these videos like even five ten years from now and be like remember all these people hated nfts and now everybody's using nfts like yeah bro some uh quick preview for some of you guys about a couple of years from now when alluvium's a success and i'm rich i've been uh <laughs> taking screenshots of different people on twitter talking shit and i'm going to start a uh, dumbass monday on twitter and uh every week i'll post a a nice person who was incorrect on my Twitter and let them know that they were wrong. So that's going to happen. I encourage you guys to join in. So yeah, it's going to be fun. What you need to do with that is you need to find these same people and watch them talking up NFTs. Be like, oh, I love NFTs and put their, their old tweet next to their new tweet and be like, what happened? Oh, How dude, come you didn't want to so listen? Many. There's going to be so many of those. It's going to be so funny to watch. Yeah. And I know you're serious about this. I'm pretty sure you've mentioned this before. This is the first I literally time. have a folder. I can send you all of the pictures. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'll i be paying attention. Can't wait to see that. Uh, okay, especially that one guy on Twitter that pops up every once in a while. His name on Twitter is literally like Stop NFTs in Gaming or something like that. That's, you know straight, that's straight up a troll. It, it has to be a troll account because some of the things he says is actually funny. Every time he says something on my Twitter, I'm just like... <laughs> Just change your name because, like, your name in itself makes everything you say, like, invalid. Like, I don't know. It, that whole account is so stupid, I refuse to believe it's legitimate. It is what it is. I, you never know these days. It might be It might be the same dude as Bob Denver because I haven't seen him on my, on my YouTube videos in a little while. Bob, leave a comment and uh, like the video if you're here. Let us know. We yeah. appreciate you. Honestly, it's, funny. it's fun to interact with haters. I know. Yeah. I, I liked yeah. when Bob Denver... Bob, I think it was Bob Denver, right? Yeah. Bob he, Denver. Yeah. Yep. I liked when he was commenting. You know, I got a little back and forth for the algorithm. Give a little banter, man. Fuck it. Who cares? Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move on here. So, uh, we, I think we just talked about this last episode, but more stuff is, is coming out with BitBoy, and it's just been a fun topic. Like, <laughs> it really he, is. Like, I'm trying to think what's happened just in the past two weeks. So, first of all, he made his own channel, uh, and right away when he started doing some live streams again you i was already i was seeing some screenshots and i was even looking myself like he was getting like four or five times the amount of viewers than his old channel that got rid of him which i thought was like hilarious 
Like, love him or hate him, I mean, he's definitely a, on the crazy side. But, like, he gets the attention. Like, I don't think that whole hit network really knew what they were putting themselves through when they tried to kick him out. Because at this point, I, I think they're going to fail. And somehow, Ben Armstrong is going to come through and have this, this new channel. But, like, the big thing that did happen was... He got arrested on a live stream trying to... Well, I'm sure he wasn't actually trying to steal back his Lamborghini. But I guess he went to the mm -hmm. house of somebody who had the Lamborghini he had bought through the company. And he was trying to confront them. The cops came. He put, like, his phone down during a live stream. The, the part that got me, like... I was... Nothing was shocking me at this point. And then the cop starts yelling... Who's, who's in the car or who's in the truck? Bro. And he's in, he tries to avoid it, answering it. They yell at him again and he's just like, it's whatever her name is. Yeah, the I don't even remember. The woman her name that is. he was cheating with his wife on. And I was just like, Bro. no way. Like, but he is... was like, he was like, uh, it's okay. My wife knows that she's here. He looks like he sets his phone down perfectly so that while he's talking to the cop, the phone can still fucking see him. It was, and... it was perfect. And he threw like, so funny. He threw like a, a, a shirt or something down and it like just covered like a little part of the screen. I was like, how yeah. did he do that? So perfect. Yeah. yeah maybe yeah. it was all set up. Maybe, I, I, maybe, I don't know, but like, Ben Armstrong is a wild guy. Like, I have no idea, so I can't tell if he's a good person or not. Really not. Yeah. Really, I don't know. But, um... He's one yeah. of those people, like, you You really, you love him or you hate him. Like, there's yeah. not very many people, like, in between. As far as, like, content goes, like, just content and being a content creator, he's the best in crypto. Like, you can uh, say he doesn't have merit or he's scammed his fans or whatever. I'm not saying that happened at all. Like, I have no idea about any of those situations that people put on him. Like, at the end of the day, as a content creator, as a personality, Ben Armstrong is, like, one of the most charismatic people in crypto. And it's no reason, it's no, like, surprise that BitBoy Crypto is failing now and Ben doing his own thing is, like, getting more views than he was yeah. on BitBoy Crypto. It's because BitBoy Crypto isn't a fucking company. It's Ben Armstrong with people yeah. that help him. Like, he's the reason why it was successful. You kick him out, now you don't have anybody. Yeah. You don't have, like, that big content creator with the charisma to bring in a bunch of people. So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, and, and I'd be willing to bet even his haters stopped watching. The, they changed the name. I think it's, like, Discovery Crypto or Discovery something. Discovery Crypto. Now. But they stopped watching that just to watch him. Even his haters, I'm sure. Because... Like I said, he's just in in the crypto space. Like he's the master of attention. Like yeah. people just want to see what crazy thing he's gonna do next. Um, I don't know. Well, and a lot the of the thing just... is like the crazy things that he's gonna do next. That's not. I don't. That's not a planned thing though. He's just actually like crazy sometimes. You know. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get with him. It's like watching like, one of those weird live streamers that like always fuck around and do stupid shit. It's yeah. like that's Ben Armstrong once in a while and sometimes we get like a golden nugget out of it i've i watched some of his live streams where they have like the whole like rundown like we have over here and he'll yeah, just I love those but there'll be there were some episodes where he would just start off with a rant right from the beginning and go on for like an hour and just be like that was it we're not we're not even doing the the show and mm -hmm. it's just like that's what it was you you never knew what you were gonna get and it was it was definitely entertaining at times i'll give him that sure. for um, sure entertaining good streams I'll tell you, I, I'm, I am keeping up more with what he's doing now than I did for, you know, the past year before all of this happened. So he's bringing yep. attention everywhere. I'll tell you that. Um, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's just fun. I'm sure this will come up again if some more crazy stuff happens. But, uh, yeah, it's been entertaining. One of the, the few entertaining things over the past month. Let's move on to this last topic we we got rid of leak of the week last last uh episode but we're bringing it back there's a couple good leaks in here i'm gonna share mine first right now now this one oh obviously we're going right to pvp i can't wait for this so this is gonna be what happens i'm almost positive every round of a pvp if so say i'm playing you jim barino and i beat you for that round my um my mozart is going to attack your mozart from across the the board and put damage on your mozart and then once a mozart like 
dies, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, um, then that's how the PvP match ends. Uh, and I don't know how it's... Like, this is obviously a fire flame that gets thrown. I'm sure there's going to be one for for each of the affinities. I don't know how it's going to to know which one to use. Anyways, I think this is just going to be cool. At the end of each match, you're going to see something flying across the board, putting damage on that Mozart. Uh, it's just yeah. another thing that's getting me excited for PvP that we're hopefully getting soon. Yeah, those blasts are, like, they seem like a small thing, but they really are one of those uh, aspects of the game that really bring in your immersion when you're not expecting it. It's like a subconscious thing. And, yeah, this one looks beautiful. Yeah, I mean, just think about, like, the alternative. What if they, you just ended your round and they just said, all right, this person won by this many points. It's, like, yeah. it's a lot more engaging and fun to look at, like, this big flame getting thrown across the, the board, hitting them, causing that damage. Yeah. Um, you need the visuals for the beginning and then, like, the actual match and then the end to tie it all up yep. to reset into the next round. For exactly, sure. exactly. Oh, hopefully soon, hopefully soon. Please, Labs, <laughs> give us fucking PvP. Best one there is. It's the best leak there's ever been, to be honest. I mean, we're almost at PvP. Honestly, this is like a super early version of all the UI and stuff, I guess. But it still looks pretty good. I saw people, and I talked with Scoriox about this on the download. People yeah, were complaining yeah. about the profile picture size being too small. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in it. Generally, in video games... The profile picture or your avatar, whatever, is usually around that size. So, yeah. for me, it's fine, but... Yeah, I don't see a problem with it. Uh, I mean, I guess it would be kind of cool if you could, like, click on it and expand it. If you were, you know, oh, really curious cool. about what they had. That's a good but, idea, actually. But for just being able to sit sit there like that, yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, this does look pretty cool. The alluvials just, they don't look natural, though. I don't know if they were just, like... Is this an actual screenshot, or was the it was it the board and they just threw some of these alluvials it's, on it? It's an actual screenshot, but they're uh, but it's not an actual picture of them in game, I guess, because they're all T posing. So yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. They they look a little um awkward there. Yeah, but it is gonna be cool once you can get in here. You see your whole deck, you know, lined up at the bottom. You got your those augments are looking really cool. Yeah. Um, I don't and think I've the seen... weapons are uh, cards yeah. as well now. Oh yeah, right. Because the weapons were just you would just click on your your ranger and they would pop up. Yep. Um, oh, so those are gonna count as cards in your deck, huh? So now you're gonna that's gonna be another thing. It's like how many alluvials versus how many you know armaments, how many exactly. augments. But I'll tell you what, in all the games that I've played, um, specifically, I think of games like. Uh, Pokemon Duel that I used to play. My favorite part of the whole thing was just like theory crafting the decks. Like I'll spend so much time being like, oh, I need to put these certain alluvials, getting these um these augments in there so they just sync up perfectly. And I don't know, I, I just have more fun coming up with the best possible deck. Um, but what ends up happening is I'm just like, oh, I need these extra two pieces so bad. I'm going to have to go on to the alluva decks and buy them. So I'm probably not going to have everything I want. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, just putting together a deck, I'm going to have a lot of fun with. 100%. Theory crafting is going to be so much fun. Like the when you play a deck for like a little bit, like a week or two, and then you start losing to this or that card over and over, mm -hmm. and then you find a replacement for that, and then there's another card that. Are, that um, counters that replacement, and it's like this constant battle of trying to min-max and make your deck the most efficient and have the best cards. That's that's what it's about. That is so much fun. I think um, I've probably spent more time like creating decks or teams or whatever than playing the actual game itself when it comes to like card games and stuff. So yeah, that, that stuff is almost as fun as playing the game if not just as fun uh, i'm the same way i i can remember just like for some of these other games i would play like uh like i used to be like an athletic trainer so i would be sitting out at like uh like a football practice or a soccer practice or something and i'd just be like watching making sure nobody gets hurt but in my head i was just thinking of like oh i need to get this one figure i need to put these together that's 
That's what I need. That's going to make my, my deck the best. Can't wait till I had some free time to actually go and, and put it together and, and build mm-hmm. it. Like, and the whole idea of the NFTs, it, it adds so much more to it. You might be like, I have a Ram fire right now, but you know what? If I actually traded that out for a Ram fight and uh, something or something else, I can make my deck better. And I might actually make a little money off of that trade. If I sell my Ram fire, pick up these other three, I'll net, you know, $25 and I'll make my team better. Like that's going to be cool to think about that way. Then you're like, Oh, that extra $25, I can go and buy this augment that I really want. Like hundred percent. It, it, it's going to be cool. And I'm going to, that's was the whole thing. I really wanted to like have my channel focused around from the beginning, from when I made this is just like, how do you min max things in the whole ecosystem? And what are you going to buy? What are you going to sell? How are you going to, you know, maybe make some profits, but make the best deck you can make with the money that you have. Like, I'm going to do a lot of that on my channel. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to do a a lot of guides, a lot of deck builds, a lot of uh, reviews of pros decks. It's going to be fun. It's going to be really fun. I can't wait. Like that, that you talking about like going to work and thinking about building your deck. That's going to be us here in a few months when PVP releases. We're going to be like, what can I yep. do to add this mammoth in and who can I synergize with him and yeah. oh, this guy isn't doesn't mix with him affinity or class wise, but he works with him in this way or yeah. that way. I'm going to have gonna so many cool. notes on my phone to be like Yeah, dude. It's going to be like the my fire my fire in water deck and then I'm going to have everything listed out so when I get home, oh, let me try to plug all this in there and see if it works and then it probably won't work and i'll be like the next day i'll be like i i gotta switch (laughs) this and this and all right i gotta can't keep talking about this i'm getting too excited all right that's it episode 29 is done episode 30 is coming in two weeks i'm hoping we really have more to talk about at that point this was one of the the hardest weeks to come up with some topics so i'm sure we'll have something better coming soon um that's it jim barino as always for joining thanks for coming on yeah. And uh yeah, that's it. Go follow his his stuff, his Twitter, his Twitch, his X, I guess, uh YouTube, everything he's got. Yep, and like. go check him out on uh Scoriox's channel that uh, by the time you're seeing this, it probably came out two or three days ago. Yep. Um and if you work for Alluvium Labs, release PvP. Yeah, that too.